In this video, we'll be looking at the histology or the structure of the pancreas and looking at the different parts of it and what they do. So the pancreas is an organ that can do various things. Uh, one of the things that is that they can release digestive enzymes for digestion. So for example, uh, amylase and proteases and um, lipases. And they can also control the blood glucose level by releasing specific hormones. So we say the pancreas it can actually have an exocrine function and an endocrine function. Exocrine, you don't need to know that much. And this is namely the digestive enzymes. Whereas the endocrine would be release of hormones, usually specifically to the bloodstream to do various things. In an exam question, you might be given a, a microscopic image of the uh, pancreas, and then you might be asked to label or be able to recognize specific parts of that and to tell the functions of that. Namely, first of all, we'll look at the exocrine and the endocrine bits. So uh, the bits on the side, the purple, these three things here, those are the exocrine tissues. Specifically, they're called the pancreatic acini. So the pancreatic acne are uh, exocrine tissues and they uh, the main function is that they produce and secrete digestive enzymes uh, for digestion and they can usually release it into the small intestine uh, in an alkaline environment to do various chemical reactions. If you look at them under a microscope, then they are usually of a darker stain and they tend to appear as small barrel-like clusters. If you look at an actual microscopic image, you will see that it's pretty much the main part of the pancreas it makes up a large section of that but for simplicity's sake i've just drawn it just a couple of clusters here to show what they generally are like but they're not always in this flower form or flower shape they are a lot they are a lot more varied in terms of that but they tend to be smaller berry like clusters that's one way to recognize them and this one here is just a branch of a pancreatic duct that can lead to the duodenum and into small intestine. So any enzymes that are produced in these cells, they can go into the duct, uh, pancreatic duct, and then be delivered to the small intestines. But one of the major parts that, uh, that you can see here that I put a little bit more emphasis on, that is what we call the eyelid of Langerhans. There are always some weird names in biology, but you just need to make sure you learn these names. Now, the eyelid of Langerhans, or eyelids of Langerhans, depending on how many you're talking about, are endocrine tissues and they can produce and secrete hormones. Um, you will need to know specifically the two types of hormones that they make. Um, and they are usually lightly stained under a microscopic image and they are large spherical clusters compar in comparison to the pancreatic acne, which are smaller bear like clusters. Um, they tend to be surrounded by um, connective tissues or fibers. So that's why you can see that it's kind of got a like, almost like a membrane around it. Um, usually they might not be that obvious, but just be aware that they can be contained within certain areas. If you actually look into the eyelids of Langerhans, you can see, first of all, there will be some um, branches, at least, of capillaries that are either found around it or inside, actually, the eyelids of Langerhans. And because all of the hormones that are produced in the actual uh, cells in the eyelids of hands can actually go into the bloodstream and travel to the target cells or target organs. Whereas, obviously, in comparison, the pancreatic acne produces the enzymes into the pancreatic duct instead and not the bloodstream. There are two main types of cells in the eyelids of hands that you need to be aware of. The first ones you can see that are, I've labeled in green are called alpha cells. So alpha cells are cells that can produce glucagon and glucagon is a hormone that is used to increase our blood glucose level. In the next video, in another video, I will be talking about how the glucagon actually increase our blood glucose level, but for now just be aware that it's a hormone that can do this thing. Whereas the other ones uh, call, are called beta cells and they can produce insulin uh, to decrease our blood glucose level. And uh, alpha cells and beta cells can actually, uh, they can both regulate the amount of glucagon and insulin that they produce by negative feedback. They can actually detect, uh, they are the actual cells that detect our blood glucose level and decide how much glucagon and how much insulin they are going to produce and secrete into the bloodstream for uh, fluctuations in our glucose level. Uh, in, in a specific case, actually, insulin that is produced by beta cells can uh, stop alpha cells from producing more glucagon in the case of a high blood glucose level. So there are different ways that they can regulate how much uh, of the hormones that they produce. Now, I can't actually pre uh, 
show an image from the internet in case there are copyright issues. Uh, but if you're looking at those microscopic images, hopefully you will be able to see the the different uh, colors or different levels of staining they have. That's actually uh, something called differential staining. Hopefully you would remember this slightly from um, from when you were doing chapter two back in AS. And differential staining is just the technique of staining where they would stain uh, the actual uh, different cells using different stains because those stains are designed or have a specific shape or, or structure that can bind to specific receptors, let's say, on the uh, cells surface or even the chemicals that they produce. So for example, um, a, particular, the, a particular way that we can see the different alpha and beta cells is because one of the stains that they can use uh, would stain insulin that is produced in the beta cells and that helps us see the beta cells because only beta cells would have insulin in them whereas the alpha cells don't have them so therefore they would present a slightly different color or different shade. So just to summarize, uh, the pancreas is an organ that can release digestive enzymes um, as an exocrine tissue because they have the pancreatic acne that can do that and they tend to appear in dark, uh, uh, in small bear-like clusters that have a slightly darker stain. And any of the enzymes that they can produce can go into the pancreatic duct uh, around them and then they can go to the small intestine for release for digestive purposes. Then we've got the eyelids of Langerhans, uh, which are endocrine tissue and they can produce and secrete hormones and they usually are large spherical clusters that are lightly stained. And within the islets of Langerhans we have two main types of cells. We've got the alpha cells that can produce the glucagon to increase our blood glucose level and we've got beta cells that can produce insulin to decrease our blood glucose level. And the way they do it is once these cells produce the hormones, they can go into the blood uh, stream or go into the capillaries around them that can travel to target cells to increase or decrease the blood glucose level. And that is the histology and function of the pancreas.